Good evening, folks. Welcome out. It's April 12th, 2023. Good to have you with us tonight. Uh, I started the mixer about 12 years ago, 14 years ago, looking for y'all to help move it forward. We've got a couple of core members, Denise Garza, who I'm going to introduce first, and she will proceed to introduce Michael and uh, our guest. So uh, it's all yours, Denise, and please, everybody else, mute your microphone. Hello, I am Denise Garza. I am an actor, singer, writer, director, producer, person here in the Austin area and um, a new core member of the Network Austin Mixer. Um, thanks to Gary and Tootie um, for including me. And um, yes, I'm going to introduce the even newer core team member of the Network Austin Mixer and our um, uh, interviewer MC for tonight, Michael Druck. Thank you so much, Denise. Appreciate you. Um, my name is Michael Druck. I make my living casting. I'm a casting director here in Central Texas, and um, I'm, I act from time to time. And but overall, you could say I'm a supporter of the community. I, you know, whether you're a coach or whether you're an actor or all that creative, so you could say. And um, very uh, honored to um, have Gary and Denise and Tootie and you know. Uh, Judith and everyone championed me from the start of my career and then also uh, Donnie Sardi have to give her props too for uh, co-starting this and what we're in our 15th year right folks about 15th year doing this and it's been going on for a while and we've been doing this virtually since COVID so uh, we we're just going to keep this going and uh, there's plenty more people for our local actors to get to know to get to see on an intimate level and know what they do in our community. So I thought we would kick things off this month by highlighting two coaches and actors who I yes, highly uh, admire. And um, yeah, make sure that you're on mute if you're just joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I wanna go ahead and um, introduce who we have in our panel today. Uh, we have Mr. Marco Perella here and Ms. Paula Russell. Um, we'll start with Marco's bio. You know, Marco here has over 100 principal TV and film roles to his credit. He is best known for his role in Boyhood in 2014. A lot of other credits. Um, you know, he started his debut film acting role in Fandango. And um, Marco, please feel free to correct me later on. This is what I pulled from Wikipedia. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I will just say, Marco is a consummate working Texas actor, uh, numerous commercials, numerous films, you know, from TV, you know, T Walker, Texas Ranger to uh, Scanner Darkly. He's worked with um, pretty much every major director we have here in town. And as, as an acting coach, he's been working for over 35 years. So again, I'll let him go more into detail with what he does. Uh, Miss Paula Russell here has acted in theater, film, TV, directed a lot, and a lot of theater in Los Angeles, as well as uh, the Ensemble Studio Theater, Actress Playhouse, Independent Venues, Long Center Rollins, and uh, Texas in Washington. Uh, she is a staff of the uh, Zach Theater Performing Arts School and the State Theater School of Acting through the Alamo Austin Community College, and uh, teaching acting in film and also uh, stage and audition workshops and showcase directing. Um, what doesn't she teach at this point? Uh, I believe she's been teaching nonstop for 40 years. So, you know, collectively we have a lot of great um, uh, knowledge here. So I'll let Paula talk a little bit more about what she does when we get to those specific questions. And a little fun note, I like to say, you know, it wouldn't be Austin uh, without pointing out that both Marco and Paula are both musicians too. So yeah, that, that <laughs> keeps the actor, musician, coach tradition here going on in, here in Texas. So, so uh, please welcome um, Marco and Paula with us here today. Um, you will get a chance for a Q&A. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guide them through some questions that I think a lot of us want to hear. And then um, also keep in mind, we are recording this. So if there's something you feel like you missed, you can always watch uh, and play back. And then also you can view previous mixers too. So um, yeah, just we'll, we'll have at it then. So um, <clears throat> I'd say it's safe right now, Marco and Paula, y'all can go ahead and unmute there or um, as th that way it makes it easier for y'all and y'all can chime in with each other here. I wanted to just get to the nitty gritty here. Um, first of all, I want to uh, talk about 
what point in your acting career did you start coaching actors? And can you tell us about that transition, you know, from being an actor yourself and just working one-on-one with actors or in a group setting, either one of y'all? Go ahead, Paula. Oh, okay. Well, um, I had been in theater or acting, well, since childhood, because my dad was a theater professor, but I was in Joan Darling's class and um, a lot of times people would ask me questions I, and my answers would make their work better. And I wanted nothing to do with being a teacher. I wasn't raised by a teacher, but Joan Darling uh, dragged me kicking and screaming into teaching. I was so terrified the first day, I think I lost four pounds before the class started, uh, but that was like 40 years ago. And as a matter of fact, um, she still teaches every, she's going to be 88 and all of her students are going on Zoom to celebrate her. And she still teaches directing and acting for Sundance for Robert Redford. She's done it ever since I've known her. And uh, so I'm still in touch with her. She's changed my life. So it's all her fault. <laughs> and Marco? Oh, you know, <clears throat> I guess I'd been acting for, uh, I've been acting for at least 10 years. Uh, I'd only been acting in Texas for about five years. And my wife and I took uh, classes with Cliff Osman. And he was a great, great uh, mind for acting. And it was a simple, he had a simple idea that we, both took to really well. And he asked us to help him teach in Austin and San Antonio and Dallas. So uh, we started helping run, you know, acting workshops. And then we just kept doing it on our own. And uh, and it, it just, we, not, we never stopped. I never really stopped. I thought it was a good thing to be able to fall back on when I wasn't working as an actor myself and uh, it seemed to be helping people at least uh, giving them a place to, to, to work. I always thought that, you know, best way to get better at acting is to do a lot of acting. So I, I always like to choose scenes for people. Oh, you did this romantic lead last, last week. This week you're gonna do a creature. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay, try that. <laughs> now something else, you know. I always found that stretched people, made them, gave, gave them confidence that they could do different things. Still well, that, that's what I appreciate about both of y'all is when you coach with you, you, you get you two individually. So you're seeing these actors grow. You're challenging them. I'm sure you've gotten actors that have come and gone with you throughout the years, right? So you've seen them at different points in their career. And, uh, and I, again, I mean, it, it, to each his or her own, however they run their own acting studio. But again, I, I love that the Austin actors can just train directly with you and you, you, you know what to do. And you're coming from an actor's standpoint too. So, um, well, I, I think that's a great segue for my next question. Either one of y'all or both of y'all. Um, what would you say you focus on in your acting training with, with your students? I mean, let's just say for our film, TV, commercial people, you know, not necessarily theater. What would you say? I yield the floor to Paul. What? I yield the floor to you. Oh, he's making me go first ever again. What do I focus on? Um, I focus, uh, this is the thing, I call myself a pluralist because I focus on everything. I, I teach every single class and start every single class with a very specific relaxation exercise that is for actors, which makes them acutely, athletically awake and alert, but without tension. If they have tension, it should be the character's tension later, not, not theirs. Uh, but also to just totally include them, themselves. So if they're terrified in a scene for some reason, you know, if they're nervous, if they're new or just that's in their personality, since whatever's happening in a scene, for me, this is an important part. It's an emergency. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, um, David O. Russell, who's a film director, who's won many awards, says, walking down the street is life and death. So if you're in an emergency, so it's okay to be nervous. 
don't just do what you would do uh, and try to accomplish whatever your character is trying to accomplish. So I work a lot with the physical and the emotional together because it, you're, it's like an athlete. An actor is a lot like an athlete. And you can't, you can't read a book to learn to be an actor. You can read about it, but you, like Marco said, you have to do it. You have to do it and do it and do it. So, I like that because there are a lot of books about acting, I'm sure, from people who may or may not know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Good book. And there are some, there are some, Marco, you have a book, right? But I, I, I love your book. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, Marco, so um, what do you focus on in a nutshell? I know there's a lot you, you both focus well, on. It's the same thing Paula said, exactly the same thing. But it's just the, it's more, it makes it sound complicated when you talk about acting and all the little techniques. And all coaches have their favorite little lingo we call, well, you play your objective. No, you did your motivation. No, no, that's your intention. It all is the same stuff. <laughs> Basically, we're, we're, we're copying life. We're, 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 you're, uh, acting is just living. And uh, what we do in life is ad lib all the time. You know, we make it up as we go along. What you need to do is use the character and the lines that are written, but approach it just like you approach real life. Make it look like you're making it up right now and feeling stuff simultaneously. And you get used to it by doing it a lot and, and it stops bothering you and you stop being scared about everything. So courage, I would say, would be the thing I... I preach the most is an actor needs courage. Like J Jack Nicholson said, 90% of this job is nerve. I think that's <laughs> um, well, that, 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 I love what you both said because it complimented each other. Um, it sounds like, you know- He said you, that about, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was gonna say, it's like you asked two different people for directions to the same location. You might have a different way of going, getting there, but you, you still have that same end goal. And that's a teacher, like yeah, named Bobby Lewis, who said, I don't care what you call it as long as you do it. <laughs> Objective, intention, event, just, you know, <laughs> go. <laughs> and that, that kind of leads me to my next segue here, because I do get actors from a casting standpoint of all levels hit me, hit me up and say, hey, not hit me, right? <laughs> but hit me up and say, um, you know, it feels like they can't act unless you're getting paid for a job. And I'm like, no, you could act at home. You can act in class. You know, I feel like that, that that's kind of the common misconception as actors feel that there isn't work for them to practice on when I'm sure you give your, your actors and your students take home work that they could do or, or, and also the work they're doing in class. That's, is that correct? I give them homework. Yes. Um, mainly, if I give somebody a, a, a you know challenging scene that they seem to like, I say, now that you've done the scene, go home, rent that movie, watch that scene, and see the people that were making thousands of dollars, how what it took to get that 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 role for them, you know. And but don't I, I don't go look at it before you do the scene because we want your interpretation. Uh, that's the kind of homework I give. You know, that brings up another question for me. Uh, Paul, did you want to add to that? Oh, I was just going to say, yes, that um, I give homework, which includes um, not making it about the words of the scene. Don't perform the words, but no, you know, personalize all of it, whatever it means to you. And, and you don't have to tell anybody else what you chose. If it's working, it's working. And, it's, and that can be private, you know, but just... Um, in terms of working on the scene, I like actors to do, I actually invented this. Well, I thought I invented it, turned out <laughs> it's kind of been done before, but only in a film, which is I have them actually bring in a moment alone as the character. It doesn't have to have anything to do with the scene. It could be the character getting ready to go to the dentist or, you know, getting ready for bed. And in that I want them to sing as the character, dance as the character, eat as the character, have a, an accident as the character with no agenda other than that they're getting ready to do whatever it is. And many times something comes out of that, but then ends up in the scene. And then they, they've 
invented that. And if they say to me, oh, my character would never sing and dance, I always say, until today. Don't say no to stuff, all you actors. <laughs> say yes. I like that, Paula. That's good. I like that. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> you can yeah, steal I love that because, you know, you're still... You're still learning from each other. I love that. That that. Oh, that I love to watch it. <laughs> uh, and that's why I like doing events like this because I'm like, oh, that's a good one. I might steal that. You know, <laughs> when I've been on panels before. Um, so that's what's great. Now, I do. I, mean, I didn't put this question out to you earlier. Um, a lot of parents come to me with their kids, and you know, they're like, my kid wants to act and all that, and I already have my stuff ready for them usually I feel like I just need to give the parents a good business class and then let the kid act because a lot of times I'm like oh I don't want to touch the kid too. I don't want to, to mess with the kid being a kid because you know they're their own precocious self I always feel like every time directors shoot in Texas they want to see real kids they don't want to see that eight-year-old who's acting like they're going on 14. So have y'all coached kids and do you have a different approach for kids or what is a good 101 you would give to these parents who say, my kid wants to get into acting? <laughs> who wants to go first, Marco? Well, uh, I'm not teaching kids right now. Mm -hmm. Did you have, right? Privately sometimes, but uh, I teach teens and up. Uh, I'll tell you why, just because Unless they're teens, there's certain kind of scenes you don't want to want to do in class with little kids. Right. And so it limits everybody. And I have to be the policeman to watch out, make sure nobody says too many bad words or it can't be an adult themed scene. Oh, right. you have to go out of the room on this one, go wait in the hall. <laughs> and I just, I, I can't do it. Uh, so I leave that, I'm telling them to go to somebody's class that's doing kids and they have a, they don't want to, they want to be in the more advanced classes, but it's yeah. sometimes. Um, I don't teach children's classes anymore, but I've directed some children's theater. One person said to me, I can't believe how patient you are. And the fact is I wasn't feeling impatient, therefore I wasn't being patient. You know, I wasn't upset, they're kids. But, um, and also like with you, Marco, I don't, with an interview, I'll take a 16 year old into an adult class, but I don't, I don't want that. What happens is the adults censor themselves automatically because there's kids there. And if there's two kids, they show off for each other. So it can be not a healthy environment, but there was a woman directing a, a film and they wanted me to coach and they wanted me to interview the children that were auditioning for this movie. And so this one kid, I mean, it was impossible to get them. The mother wanted this child to be in this movie and the kid had a great look and clearly was not an actor and had no interest in being an actor. And I kept telling the company, do not cast this kid. And there was a little Latina girl who was spectacular. And they said, yeah, but you know, we don't think that a Latina girl, believe it or not, would be an orphan. And I said, <laughs> anyway, they ended up having to get rid of the child who was being tortured by its parent. That's the thing that you made me think of it, you know, when you mentioned it, Michael. The child has to really want to do it. They did end up using the girl and she was wonderful, but somehow you have to let these parents know that it's if the child doesn't want to do it they're going to be miserable and possibly damaged ooh ooh what a yucky story oh sorry no i mean it's, well, it's i mean sometimes we have to audition that 6 year old for that csi who played an abuse victim you know sometimes we have to go there but i prefer to go slightly older like the 8 or 9 year old who looks like they're 6 cuz they've had more time in their life to do I mean that, that's a whole casting 101 thing for me but uh but like you said it, it feels like if the kid is ready if the kid wants it if the kid you know I mean it's just it's it, there's so many factors involved that there isn't just a generic answer for it but again we do get a lot of the parents who are like I want my kid to try it. and my advice is get them on a set you know get them to try it. and then if they start getting auditions for things and yeah get some coaching with coaches who really want to, Mona actually saved me once when I was going to do a kids class she said Michael it's going to take all day <laughs> like kind of like be prepared to teach a kids class it's not oh I'm going to teach a kids class so I'm glad that she pulled me aside and gave me that advice because like, it does take a certain energy and it takes it's just a different approach altogether 
and even casting kids is different than casting teens and adults who get it and you know we don't have to like mince words around them you know because I say when you're on a set you're around 200 crew members you're not going to be mincing words so you got to kind of be protective of the kids when we can so that's m my main kid segue but <clears throat> Let's get to, uh, okay, so a uh, quick little segue, folks, for all the people watching. Thank you for taking your notes and paying attention. Um, we do have a meeting chat group here. Um, if you go to the chat section, people are putting little notes, saying their hellos. We're going to be dropping some links in there, too, so it's a good way to communicate uh, there, too. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention this now. It's about 721. I will ask one to two more questions. And um, then we'll start opening it up for Q&A here. So um, if you want to start raising your hands, you can. That way we can go ahead and start in that order of who raised your hand first. I believe there's like a little hand icon there. And um, yeah, if you want to start raising your hands, you can. And then when we get to the Q&A section, if you have a question for Marco or Paula or both, you can go ahead and ask that. But I'm, I'm going to still ask one to two more questions here. So you have a little bit of time to do that. Okay, great. And we already have our first one. That's beautiful. Um, okay, continuing on. The pandemic hit <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> changed our whole industry, changed how we cast, changed how we coach. How did that affect y'all? And then like, have you, do you still teach virtually? Like what's going on Like, in a nutshell, like from where you were then and where you are now? Well, I still, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, he went. I, I I did. I had I stopped teaching the live classes for a while, and I taught online only for a year, over a year before I went back to the live class. Once we got the vaccines and everybody was getting vaccinated, I thought it was safe enough to go ahead and do it, and uh, so and it worked out pretty good. I, now I just I teach live class on Monday and Tuesday I do online. And the online is because I have people that have gone to other places and are living in LA or New York. I even had a woman join from, from London and did, did scenes on online from London. So I keep that one open, but I, most people want to do a live class. They want to come to the, and, and be, be with people in the room. So that, that's still what I do basically. Yeah. And, I too, and I, you were saying, how did it go? I thought, oh man, this will be terrible. I'll start with monologues. Well, it turned out we found ways to do scenes. We found, I didn't think a personalization game, which I don't want to detail it, but you, I always thought you would have to have the person you're working with with you for that. And it worked. I had them just, well, you know, when you're slating your name and talking to nobody there to the camera, that's that's how I had them do that exercise and it worked. So I'm still teaching online too. It's not the same, of course, as when you can, you know, physically be with your scene partner, but I was surprised how well it worked and I'll, I'm going to be continuing it. I think, yeah, we've all like seen the perks and the pros and the cons of both. Yeah. Like what you're saying, you, you can be in any city and coach with an actor wherever you want. Like, especially if you're prepping for an audition or something. And y'all do that? Do you do either of y'all do privates for if people have an audition to prepare or like all the time? The other day I had two last minute and we ended up being off because they didn't have time to get to me. So I said, send it so I can read it. And, you know, it, it's sometimes it's on short notice. I, Marco probably has the same thing where somebody actually lives somewhere in Austin, but not close and they have to have something right away. Yeah, um, I think we should be in, the, in that part of the business. I mean, that's when they need us, you know, just for confidence sake, if nothing else. Yeah. The last minute warm up, you know, you give them a pep talk, get in there and fight, you know. <laughs> Yeah, when people are asking my opinion on who to refer, I go, well, I feel like prep, audition prep's more like a good realtor. You know, you're not teaching them how to act. You're more like, we'll try it this way. We'll try it that way. Okay, we'll try it. Yeah, so, and I know each of y'all have your different approaches, but when do you think an actor should get coaching? Like, is it for a guest star role, a co-star role, just whenever you feel like a good indie? Or is it just depends on what the actor's comfort level is? I think if you can do it, you should always get coaching. I mean, that's just, 
I think it's helpful if you have somebody you trust. Sometimes I have an actor and we'll go, I'm so glad you to do that, you know, because you. <laughs> I, I mean, and, have a you know, three liner, you know, you know, I think most people, you can give them confidence. Hey, there's three lines. You can, mm -hmm. you don't, you know, what you're the more, with some parts, if you have a short little part like that, you'll be more inclined to over rehearse it and, and it'll become a little performance thing that you're doing and it won't be a <laughs> you're the guy that's something if you, you want fries with that okay great that was your role you know you can't do you want fries with that you know <laughs> John Sales movie about that one time and that's a, a big mistake to make you have to toss these things off and not, it's not the biggest moment of this character's life you have to know that as the character you're just living, you know? Co-star roles, gotta love them. They're literally one or two words sometimes. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, I made the joke in my workout class the other day. I was like, you know, I literally auditioned for a role called Fat Guy for a New Mexico job. <laughs> like one word, I was like, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> I was like, hey, it made my agent laugh. I was happy about that. Anyways, but um, yeah, you'd be surprised. Now, I, I'd like to ask one more question then we'll open it up. So I wanna make sure everyone gets their questions answered. but. Um, this can be a bit controversial, but also I feel like it happens a lot regionally, and these are just questions I hear, you know, throughout the peanut gallery. What is your opinion on when an actor should export other coaches or stay with their one? Or, I mean, I know it's good for business if they stay with their one, but as an actor, what do you think an actor should do when pursuing, like, different coaches, different training, different types of experiences? What do you think about that? You first, Marco. <laughs> well, Paul, I, I don't know. I I think it depends, first of all, on the uh, actor's temperament. Yep. And uh, some actors just aren't comfortable in certain kind of classes. Like some of my actors went off to LA and they, they joined a class and the first, the first night of the first class, okay, everybody take off your clothes. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. This actually happened. Was that James Franco's studio? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, we got to break down all your inhibitions if you're going to be an actor. And some people just can't, don't, don't want to do that, you know. Uh, other people want to concentrate on, do the exercises for you, you know, get all revved up and breathe fire and, and all that's great. I love it. Other people just give me a scene that I can do a character. So a lot of it is which what your temperament is suited for. But I believe generally that people should test out, take, take more than one class from one, more than one teacher, see what's available. You're always going to get something. You're going to learn something somehow from somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, if and if you if you want to pick one for a long time relationship that that's fine and I, I i love that you know i love seeing people over the years and, and helping them but I, I i think you have to realize not everybody has all the answers and somebody might talk your language better than that i'm talking it you know and i i, I so i say try it out go go for it do other classes yeah i think i I think that actors should feel safe that if you go into a class and for, for whatever reason, if the if the coach invades your personal life or just fails you to take off all, all your clothes, or if the atmosphere just doesn't feel good, you know, whether right or wrong, it is good to try out different coaches. But if you don't feel like you're thriving, don't be ashamed to check out elsewhere and if you find someone that you want to stay with for you know 10 years and I've got lots of those that's that's great if you are staying with somebody because you're growing there and you're constantly challenged definitely take improv take social dance take karate take singing uh, you know stretch your instrument outside of whatever is the limitations of whatever class you're in go somewhere to get the stuff that's not happening in that class, whatever that might be. 
I'm glad you said what you said to Marco and Paula, because um, I do feel like people do hop around coach to coach waiting to hear those magic words. Like, tell me what I need to really make it in this business. Tell me what I really need to be a working actor. And I think I, I admire the coaches who are like, there is no magic formula. There are no magic words. You just have to do it. And so that's usually a good like gauge for me on like, oh, am I going to refer that coach or not? Because, you know, if you come in with all the answers, it's like, okay, great. Now let's just, you know, wait for you to win that Oscar, you know? So, <laughs> but, um, and you both seem like you're about the work and that's what I just love to hear. That's, that's music to my ears. And, and I think that that's what a lot of actors need to walk away with. So um, I will do one uh, reminder before we go to our questions here for the Q&A. Um, again, the meeting chat, uh, Gary did remind us to feel free to put your contact info, what you feel like sharing, whether it's your LinkedIn or your email or social medias, uh, a perk to socially engaging on a, um, a Zoom like this is community. And then also, you know, if you ever need a reader for those 11 p.m. self tapes that that mean casting director sent to you, then, you know, you'll have a reader. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, stuff like that. And, and, and that, that's, again, why I love about our self tape age is that we're having a community and we're able to depend on each other. Um, okay, well, well, we'll keep this going. First of all, thank you so much, Marco and Paula. Keep, keep on going. And uh, we're, we're going to make this uh, last part, hopefully, nice and um, smooth. And um, hope y'all are still hanging in there with us. Uh, but okay, so I'm going to call on y'all one at a time. Feel free to ask if you can limit it to one question. That would be great so we can get everyone in there. After you ask your question, please mute yourself so our two guests can go ahead and answer and remove your hand so we know that you've already been uh, spoke to. So I'll go ahead and start with uh, Mr. Dylan Hobbs. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say thanks, Michael, and thanks, Marco. Thank you, Paula. Uh, thanks for all your uh, time tonight and all the stuff that you're sharing with us. I love talking to actors and uh, people in the business. I miss it. Um, the pandemic is, you know, it is what it is. But um, I've, uh, I guess the, the the question that I really would like to ask is, uh, you know, a lot of um, casting directors or people they talk about. Um, not sticking to the words <clears throat> of the of the scene, not doing it word for word, um, and doing it somewhat left or right of perfect or the way that you think it should be done. Um, so I guess what does that mean to you as an acting coach for an actor to go left or right of the written material, but to also show that like they know the material, they're in touch with the material. Like where, where does the line bend and sway for you guys? Joy, so I get. Oh, go ahead, Marco. Well, okay. Uh, you're in an audition. You you know you're you're guessing. You can't get limited by. Well, oh, wonder what they want. <laughs> they don't know what they want. They won't know until they see an actor who gets them excited. They're, they're depending on us and our creativity. You know, they, they want a, their ideas to be present. So if they really love you, oh, do another take. A lot of people, my actors think, oh my God, they want me to do it again. I must have blown it the first time. I said, no, if you blew it the first time, they wouldn't be wasting their time with you. They'd just say, thank you, bye-bye. If they ask you to do another take, they like you. They want to see if you can take direction, that they can work with you, you know, that you can shade your performance a little bit. And that's all fine. That's all great. The, the, the main problem I find with my actors and all actors tend to do this since one time or another, you, they, they make the mistake of going into their audition room and trying to get the job. They're not thinking playing the character's objective. They're still lost in their own personal goals. I wonder how I'm doing. I wonder if they like me. Maybe I'll get them more mad and it'll work. And they forget to live the character's life. And that's the only way you're going to get hired is to, to be relating well to the character that's inside you. So I say, just let it rip. Let it rip. Give them all you got. And, and remember you're living. I mean, you're not going to be, 
working at 90% or left and right. I don't know, man. Well, I, I agree with Marco 100%. So my answer is really short. There's a great tape you can find on YouTube of Brian Cranston talking about how when he followed the advice Marco just gave, that's when he started getting work. He didn't go in for the job. He went in to do what he does. Cliff Austin, my teacher, that was the big thing he said. Same thing happened to him. He uh, used to be trying to get the job, trying to get the job. And he said, wait a minute. That's <laughs> not what I should be thinking about. I'm just, and he, and he said, he started treating the audition like the performance. He said, great, I get to audition today. I get to act for free. I love to act. I don't have to pay anybody. You know? <laughs> And I can do it the way I want. I'm the director too, and I, I can go in and uh, even if I get the role, there probably I won't probably won't be as much fun as this audition because I got to create the whole thing for myself. <laughs> and he started getting all this work. I'll just throw quickly here, guys. Remember, we're seeing more people now than ever. So yeah, we're seeing 200 tapes, not 40. So if you know you're off by a word or two, who are we to know? We're like, okay. You know, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> like you said, we, we don't know. They don't know what they want until they see it. So that's great. Tell you Thanks. one thing, in Friday Night Lights, they never said cut. When we auditioned for Friday Night Lights, they, you wouldn't hear cut. They expected you to keep living the character's life. And they that's why that was such a great show, because <laughs> half of it was improvised. Well, I think they definitely wanted actors who could keep going, right? Like, yeah. not to say, the words aren't on the page, so what do I do now? I don't know, keep acting, you know? <laughs> so uh, was that part of your audition process, Marco? Just since we're going, I'm Friday Night Lights is such a big part of our film history here. Um, were they making sure you could keep on improvising while uh, you were I in the casting? So. I think they were very interested in seeing the people that were committed to living the part instead of just delivering lines. Awesome. Great. Thank you, guys. Miss Adrian. Hello. <laughs> uh, Paula, I, of course, love hearing everything that you have to say, having worked with you um, throughout the years. And I was hoping you would talk a little bit more about Moment Alone, because oh. no matter uh, what skill level, what uh, uh, experience any of us have, uh, we always forget those 101 lessons. <laughs> okay, I have a compliment for you because uh, I had lunch today with someone who directed you in a play and she said at the audition, her decision was, I'm not messing with her at all. She's, <laughs> whatever she wants to do is good with me. So congratulations on that. Um, well, uh, I think I kind of described the moment alone, but how how it evolved. Well, what I think is that it it make it helps the actor to explore every part of the character that's not on the page. And you know, one of my mantras is, please don't give me what's on the page. Don't perform that out for me. I'm not deaf. I'm going to hear that. Bring me everything that's not on the page. If it doesn't say cannot tap dance on the table, then you can. So maybe in your moment alone, you tap dance on the table. Uh, and that's that great Danny DeVito story when he auditioned for Taxi and here the, this little guy comes in, they must've thought, what the hell? And he jumped up on the table and jumped up and down and yelled and got cast and they kept it in the character. How that uh, moment alone evolved was I was watching a show called the Cloris Leachman Show, which, which came out of Mary Tyler Moore. And there was an episode where her daughter said, you don't know how to be alone. And Cloris Leachman, who was a wonderful actress, started trying to be alone in her own house. And she's going around. She ended up at the end picking up things and playing on the furniture like they were drums and sat in a chair and it tipped over backwards. And that was the end. And I went, that's a great exercise. And later, a student told me everybody should watch Miles irons his pants on Frasier, where there's an eight minute moment alone that includes eccentric behavior, accidents, sing that, you know, it's everything that I asked to have in it. So I told my teacher, Joan Darling, I invented this great, we need to hear what I, Joan, I have this great idea. And she started laughing. I said, what's so funny? She said, I directed that episode of Cloris Leachman. <laughs> so that's my story about that. Is that helpful? Is that what you wanted to know, Adrian? I'm not sure. 
the thing I that thought it would be helpful for exercise what i just thought it would be helpful to for to hear for others for everyone to to hear uh, an expanded version yeah i described everything that people are supposed to do but one of the things that i'll often i warn them this is going to happen i also don't want them to work their way up to it uh if i want the scene to have um, singing, dancing, and an accident, then I want you to do that at the same time. Sing, dance, and drop something or whatever it is. Don't wait, don't do things one at a time and, and do it immediately. So that, that's a really important part of it that's hard for people to do at first. Just like the tantrum exercise, you know, don't work yourself up, just go on a cue, just hit the floor and have a fit. Don't think about it. Okay. <laughs> Paula, I thought you'd like to hear. I'm going to have lunch with Joel Thurm, the casting director from Taxi and all those. Oh, characters. yeah. Oh. So he was such a sweet guy. When I got into the CSA, he actually sent me a nice paragraph. I'm like, did y'all see that? Joel Thurm knows who I am. <laughs> and he just wrote a great book about all of his casting experiences, too. So it's oh, really my goodness. I wonder if Danny DeVito jumping on the tables. <laughs> I might be. I'm going to read it and I'll let you know. I'll, I'll get you a copy. How about that? That'll be a gift for me. Oh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, continuing on, y'all are doing great. Thank you so much again. Thank you all again for your time. Gary, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, short and sweet. Uh, Marco and Paula, y'all both know as musicians how much of it is ad lib, staying in character and improvising. It really is. And I think one of the best examples of that that hit me was seeing um, Dr. Strangelove. When George C. Scott runs around in the war room and trips and falls over, that was an accident. That was I mean, not planned. In the movie, it made the movie. It, was so it made the movie. He stayed. He didn't bring character. Go ahead, Marco. It's true. He just stood up and went like that. <laughs> I, I, I always use that as an example. No, that's a great example. Kevin Klein said, I live for accidents. <laughs> um, James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause, they had the knife fight, and the other actor screwed up and actually cut him. Blood on his t shirt, you know? And he, and the director goes, cut, cut, cut. James Dean says, don't say cut. I was having a real moment. I didn't have to act. Oh, you saw it. You got all excited, you know? <laughs> oh, Lord. Love it. I'm right. a huge Sal Minio fan. So, yeah. So, I love Rebel Without a Cause. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. You look like him. I when I'm saying, when I'm saying, no, <laughs> no, I, I do want to make a stage play about his life. I'll cast someone younger, but yeah, but there we go. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I got, um, I, I love those, those actors from those days, but what was a, a quick movie I was just watching? I don't know. Michael could talk to you all day about classic film anyway. So, um, <laughs> get this going. Um, uh, Mr. Miles, you're up. Make sure to, okay, unmute. I just, just got my unmute button going there. Thank you, everyone. And I mean, everyone, this is a phenomenal experience for me at 70, 70 years young. Uh, I'm happier and healthier than I've ever been in my life. And I'm happy to be with other creatives. Uh, and I thank you for your time and for sharing your experiences. I just want to say two things uh, in this business. Uh, for me, I hear a lot of my fellow creatives say, well, you know, I'm following my dream. You know, I, I want to be an actor. No, for me, acting is not my dream. It's my reality. And I'm so thankful. Uh, so much that has been shared. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your insights. And I'm supposed to have a question right now. And um, perhaps I don't. I'm just uh, fascinated and uh Happy to be in the presence of everyone here. So I'll release the mic. Miles, you know, just affir you know, just affirmations and you know, being nice about everything. I appreciate that because I think they like to hear that too. <laughs> uh, I do have a random fan question for y'all. Have y'all coached anyone who ended up making it pretty big up there in in the acting world? And if so, do you mind divulging any names? <laughs> <laughs> Or anyone you've worked with on stage or film, or I don't know. I just I like to do those little fun questions. 
Well, for the few, but um, money in the class. So I, I, I bet Marco's got more. Uh, I don't. I don't know the name. Cars, no, no, no big stars, but I've had a lot of people that have gone on to make a, a living or do pretty good. Uh, Isn't that the goal, right? <laughs> to make a living. <laughs> I had this one kid. Uh, you were talking about uh, kids, and he was he was eleven. And I took him. He was a special case, so because his his dad was in prison and his mother was in the drug rehab, and so he had to live with his grandma. And but he really liked movies. He I I took him to be an actor. Liz Kegley, who was a casting director back in those days, I was looking for a kid to be in a movie called Flesh and Bone, Dennis Quaid and uh, James Caan, and it was Gwyneth Paltrow's first movie, and Meg Ryan was in it too. And uh, the part was for uh, a, a boy whose dad is a burglar and would stick him through the a little transom window on his old Texas houses in a house that he was trying to break into and the kid would crawl down and unlock the front door for him. That's exactly what this little kid in my class used to do for his father to get drug money. I mean, exactly what the part called for. And they said, well, where'd you find that guy? I said, I didn't really know he'd done that. But, and he got to go off and he lived with Leonardo DiCaprio Leonardo's house, and they, they were in, he was in several movies with Leo, and did several things on his own. He did really good. What I'm fascinated too is how many directors take acting workshops. You know, because they want to know how to give direction to actors, or they don't go to school for with an acting background a lot of times. Or in most a film directors program. don't. Most directors don't know about acting. They spend all their time with the camera, you know, they know about the visual side and all, all that. R read about John Ford and what he used to do to actors. <laughs> he was very clever. He would manipulate them. In a very the, mind, the mind game some play, right? Just to get, get the performance out of someone. The Otto Primingers, all those people. Yeah, I mean, that was... Michael Curtiz's, yeah, I, I love film history. You learn so, yeah, that's another, you can learn so much about reading of our directors from yesteryear. That's sort of, And I like that you mentioned Liz too, because we have such a rich history of casting directors of yesteryear, agents of yesteryear, you know, so many people who, you know, were pioneers in our Texas community. You know, I remember, you know, I miss, that's what I miss about Mona's biz directory, if y'all remember that. I would just read that for hours because I just want to know like who's who and what made them get into the business and what is their point of view. So I, I hope down the line someone like documents who these people were. Because we're so people... lucky because in Austin we have a community where people can get a start and actually get roles, get parts that mean something that are on a professional level. It's not some fly-by-night town where, oh, two films shot here, and then they, they moved on. Yeah, exactly. You could work here. And a lot of LA, New York people are moving here still. You know, I know our rent keeps going up, right? <laughs> They're moving here still, right? Um, so, okay, continue on. We got three more questions, and then I think, you know, uh, maybe four if we can, but uh, let, let's, I'll speed it up here. Um, forgive me, Miss Ferguson? Is that Nia Ferguson? Yeah, it's Shania. Hi. Shania, beautiful Hi. name. Go for it. Hi, thank you. Uh, I just want to say for one, uh, Miles uh, Cranford, Conford, I just want to say you're like the next Morgan Freeman because I actually wrote down your quote, like acting is not my dream, it's reality. And I absolutely love that, <laughs> which is perfect because my question is actually um, uh, like, what is your greatest, most inspirational quote for your acting career slash coaching, just overall for your life? Like, what's that, what's that quote that just gets you out of bed in the morning? You mean quote that we give to our students? Um, yeah, like give to your students or just like something that, uh, that you just have like on hand, on a sticky note, on your bathroom mirror, well, one of um, just to go to. Very short yeah. for my class is <laughs> let yourself laugh. Oh, I like that. 
which is, you know, don't get all, uh, know that you're playing a game. So let yourself laugh school of acting is what Joan Darling used to call it. It was on her license plate. So that's the, that's a short answer. Short and awesome. <laughs> Marco, what is yours? I, I usually just remind myself you know, this audition is not the end all be all of, of life. I'm just relax and enjoy it. At the end of this, my, my dog still still loves me, whether or not I get this part or not. My mama still loves me, whether or not I get this part. I'm going to go off and live a, my beautiful life and not worry about it. Actors worry too much about getting roles, and you only get one out of 20 if you're really hitting on a good average. So you, have, you can't fake, call it rejection all the time and look at it as a form of torture. You just have to enjoy the process and do it with courage and love and move on. Thank you for saying that, Marco, because I always ask actors when they're throwing down on their luck and they're coming to me, I say, well, how many callbacks have you gotten this year? And they tell me the number. I go, count that as a booking because it, after the callback, it's all out of your hands. And then I say, well, how many auditions did he get? Well, guess what? We had like 10 times as many submissions. So the fact that that casting company called you in, that means that they like you and that they think you can deliver good work uh, or that director or whoever called you in. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you said that because, you know, just getting auditions and just doing the work, that's a good win. I think so. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a class mantra. It's too long to say the whole thing, but it starts out with forget what you have been taught and be instead bewildered. And the end of it says, from now on, be mad. So, just let go. Sounds good. Oh, and then uh, Gary, I also put um, Paula and Marco's info in the chat there so people can get a hold of them and go to their, their website. Let's keep going on. We're almost done here. But um, Limon, Mr. and Miss Limon, Anave. Oh, I see. Hi. I want to answer a question from Marco. Hi. Um, do you teach adults acting too? You are asking me or Paula? Or both? Uh, he, they're asking if you teach adults. I believe he does. Yes. He does. I, adults and teenagers. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a quick question. But yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> many great adults, many great well, teachers. Yeah, awesome. You guys okay. are really, you look great. I bet you're going to be great actors. So when you get to be 13, call me up. <laughs> I wanted yes. to make sure, Marco, both you and Paula mention your contact information, by the way. I think uh, Michael put it in the chat line. But yeah, so we have Marco, I have your uh, info as the actorsworkshop.com or actorworkshop.com. Yeah. And I gave them your email address too, if they ever just want to hit you up for a private or just general information. Yeah, I, uh, that'd be great. Thank and then, and then Miss Paula, I got paula-russell.com slash classes. And what email would you prefer for people to email you for classes and stuff? I had the Russell's one, but that could be another one. Oh, that's the right one. Is that a good one? Yes, russells at rockisland.com, right? Beautiful. So yeah, they have your info then in that case. And, and Google them and wherever you found the posting to, you know, they're they're very reachable. <laughs> That's what I love about them too. Uh, Miss Marla, let's keep this going. And then we probably have time for one more after that. First of all, thanks for doing this, Michael. You look great in person. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, as an actor, taking classes was so important to me, but finding the right teacher, as they were talking about, was impeccable. As a producer, when we're directing and we send out the actor's sides, one of the things I get is, well, how do you want me to deliver it? When we've given the synopsis, when we've given you know what we're expecting, how much more details do these actors need? 
How many more details would help an actor do a better audition? Do y'all prefer yes. less or more? What do y'all, what do y'all, what is your stance on that? I, I, I don't like to know everything, but you have to know the basics. Well, did I kill the guy or not? You know, the, we're, we're talking, the actor needs to know a few things. You know, did I kill this guy and I'm hiding it? Is that what you, yes, you got it. That's it. Or no, 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 you got it all wrong. He's in love with the guy's girlfriend. Oh, now I got you. Yeah, we need the basics so we can build it. It's like we can build without a blueprint, but it helps to have a blueprint to get started. That's yeah, once in a while they come with nothing. You have, you have no idea who they're talking to or what any, anything they say means. So yeah, just need the basics. So you're saying a happy medium, like at least get the synopsis, at least get a character description. I we understand that the scripts aren't available for every role, you know. But at the same time, as much because uh, I guess that's what actors are feeling a little lost, you know. They're like, well, how do you want me to do that? We're not in the room for you to give me an adjustment. Yeah. So, but like y'all are saying, at least know what the motivation is. At least know. Well, but who am I talking to? You know, sometimes that I don't too. Know yeah, exactly. Who am I giving my eye line to? And okay, are they my three mother or my lover? <laughs> It is great when the scripts have great uh, stage direction too, right? So you know, oh, this is where I'm at. I'm in a kitchen. Oh, I'm, um, you know, mom's cooking eggs and sissy's across from me. Okay, great. Now I know where to look at when I'm talking to. So versus just a one page with the three. Because I've seen a lot of social media posts where they're doing their own casting. But you know, <laughs> I get it. But they'll say, deliver these three lines. Thanks. It's like, well, oh, okay. Did we get a script? Did we get anything? And, and that's why a lot of it seems flat to the actor. They're like, well, I gave the three lines. How come they didn't call me back? Well, that's when the casting directors really help because they probably have talked to the director or the writer or something and gotten some ideas about the different characters before they call the actors that they think can do those parts. And uh, you can get a lot of information from the casting director about which direction they're looking for. I've had a director ask me three times in two weeks when I'm going to start casting this project. I'm like, where's my script? I still don't have a script. <laughs> so I'm like, part before the horse here, you know, I'm just saying, but that is our job to field. And again, it, not every film or project can afford to hire us. So if you are doing your own casting, at least the basics, like what, what Marco's saying. But thank you, Mr. Really, you're welcome. Really quick, Paula, what was that YouTube channel you said to look at? Uh, about what? Which thing? The lady that's doing the play you mentioned to YouTube to okay. listen to. Don't worry about it. Michael will text me, oh, hopefully. Sorry. <laughs> Not quite okay. I'll, have to, I'll have to replay it, but yeah, I'm sure it's in there. <laughs> I'll, get it, I'll get it for you, Ms. Marla. Uh, two more, and then we really got to wrap it up. I don't want to occupy too much of their time, but um, Mr. Carl and then Kelsey. So, Carl Thomas, you first, please. Yes. All right. All right, guys. Thank you, Michael. And uh, thanks for the guests and everyone here. My question has to do with uh, theater. I've done a lot of theater, and I find that the theater has uh, get, opened up the doors for a lot of things for me. I mean, it helped me with, uh, with my lines, and, uh, and but it's a combination, of just, not just the theater, but Overall things like voiceover and uh, uh, doing background with the commercials. I mean, I've done TV shows, I've done movies, but my theater, I go back to theater and theater is the thing that has gotten me through everything else. And my question is, what do you think about people that come in that has a theater background? I feel sorry for you if you're gonna to try to make it in the film business. Uh, with the theater background because what mostly happens is that there's no relation between the way you act on stage and the way you act in front of the camera. In fact, they're almost opposite. And good acting is good acting, however you do it. And if you can be heard on film, that's great. Because you have to be loud on stage. And on, on stage, you're making the audience see your emotional life out there, you're projecting it. 
into the audience because they can't see your eyes like we can in film. They're not up close to us, you know? So you spend all this energy going out. In, in, in on film, we do everything inside. You think about it and you deal with what you're dealing with emotionally and we see it in your eyes. So it's all inside. So you have to realize that and make compensation between stage and, uh, and, and film. I actually feel there's, that there's very little difference about what actors should be doing on stage and film. And I have a lot of trouble staying in a lot of theaters because they're doing what Marco described and they don't need to. They, they don't have to project it out there. If they're being truthful, even if it's small, the audience can feel it. If they're faking it out to the audience to help us get it, then it's just, I, I can't even sit there. So I think stage acting is, is an important uh, discipline, but sometimes it's terrible and it shouldn't be. So yes, I, I, found, I found that sometimes the, the stage acting has hindered me but I think it also helped me in terms of the fact that it, it, it uh, in terms of learning my lines, I mean, if I've, I've, I've done 64 pages in one, you know, learn in two weeks. So, but I've done, I've also acted on camera and I've had speaking roles on camera. So I do know the difference, but I just think that for me, the theater has helped me a lot, but I do know how to project on the camera also. But I, I'm sure it's not it's not the same for everyone. But I, I for love me, theater is great. I mean, it's a necessary, beautiful thing. But like Paula said, now we can in a smaller venue. You can you can work smaller, which is important. But she's right. You know, good acting is good acting wherever you're doing it on stage. I I like to have the stage acting done at a level that's still real and there's good people that can do it yep thank yeah. you well, that, that black box theater is so nice when you can do like those type of shows versus a big musical uh, pajama game or something like that you know? <laughs> and then they're trying to you know apply that same to a film audition you know so mm -hmm. I, I i get both sides and i'm glad you yeah. both said that because i've heard coaches probably as long as i've been in the business too like say that have different opinions on that that's why i got two of y'all not just one so, <laughs> but um and yeah that's great and then i will say one final thing about that too i'm i'm giving just like we give actors advice create your own work do your indies while you're waiting for these auditions if you can do like a theater festival or a quick two-week run on something your agent will kill you if you're booked out for six weeks on a show <laughs> right denise no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, and yeah. uh, i wanted to take a quick minute and thank uh jason from acclaim and all of our lovely agents too who are sending the word about this so thank you jason uh but uh but yeah that's great i love it when um uh, you know, but but thank you both for clarifying those two different avenues with that. I'm Carl, I'm glad to see that that's really helping you. I've seen a huge difference in, in your stuff, if alone for memorization alone, right? Because sometimes people freak out when they see those four page sides. And it's like, well, if you're doing a whole play, you have to memorize. <laughs> so uh, do you both on that topic have any advice for memorization? Or do you just let that come organically? Do you want to give away your trade secrets, Paula? Yeah. <laughs> go take a class with them. There we go. <laughs> there um, we go. Well, other than, you know, it's wonderful if you have someone to cue you. If not, you know, you have to hide the line. And, and don't try to memorize the whole thing at once. Get the beginning so you're comfortable with it. But the other thing is, once you, you should read the thing the first time, not knowing anything about it and making no plans virginally. So you're not already trying to direct yourself in any kind of way. You're just experiencing it anew, like an audience. When you read it again, do try to notice the character. What do they want? What would this place be like in my life? What is, what is my relationship to that person? If you, the more you know the choices you've made about the character, the easier it is to remember the lines because they're not just by rote. They, you've given them a personal background. Well, that's just like my mom. And then you never forget that. You're not trying to make the person your mom, but you put it in your biological computer and it's, it's gonna affect you. I find that helps. I, 
you're right about one thing. You, you can't try to memorize the whole four pages in one chunk. Your brain hates that. It, it <laughs> bells. You have to break it into beats, you know. And uh, I, I have techniques that I've developed that are that are foolproof. In 20 minutes, I can get almost anybody to be able to memorize a four-page script. But you have to approach it the right way. Use a lot of highlighters and pens and pencils and visually interact and and activate your whatever they call that. <laughs> well, uh, 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 I have a casting graphic memory. That's it. Photographic memory. Oh, I, have a, I have a casting question for you too. Do you advise your actors to hold their sides or come memorize? <laughs> I know they're two schools. Oh, even if it's memorized, you hold them. I, I even if they're memorized, hold them. And, and I hold them because that's that's giving information to the people that are casting you. Think of how much better they're going to be once they've had a chance to learn the lines. Right. If you put the lines on the floor and you're just there, they're subconsciously they're thinking, oh, this is as good as they're going to be, you know, because they've already learned the lines and everything. Also, if you keep it in your hand, you give something for your hands to do. A lot of people show nervousness in their hands. I know I did. And so you hold on to something. It kind of grounds you. And you can use it for a prop and shake it and throw it at the feet of the casting director. At the end of the <laughs> you, know, you heard it from them, folks. So when I say it, don't go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, hold on to your dang sides. <laughs> right. And you might think you know it. Then you get in there and guess what? <laughs> you go blind. I agree with everything that Marco said. And definitely don't keep raising your arm up and down. Hold it in a place where you can see it without you know, having to look down and don't stick it up in front of your face. Those seem simple, but people see it all the time. Especially for self-taping. I just got that question. I was like, yes, you're holding on your, I mean, look, look at me right now. You don't even, you can't even tell I'm holding on to them, but then I can hold them up like this. No one will care. <laughs> and, and have it already turned to the page that you're going to have trouble on. The first page you've probably learned. You go to the middle of the script and and, and hold it and you won't make noise. Every time you turn the page yeah. of the script, you're reminding who the audience that you are not the character, you're an actor. And, and they, they, it's hard for them to lose themselves in the scene that way. And you want to take them into your world. So don't keep reminding them that you're an actor, but have the script handy when you need it. Remember your first self tapes, the first read too, right? I mean, you like, I love what Marco said too, you know, about, you know, it will continue to get better if you're hired. Not necessarily like this is the best it's going to be. Yeah. You know, so that's great. Well, so. If you've had it home and you have to put it on a tape and you've had it for three days and, and you're doing it with your hands, sometimes you, you have to do it without the script or else it's, it's just, it's too. Uh, right. Look like don't, you have, don't punish yourself over four pages when you've had a 12 hour deadline, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah, correct. <laughs> We're trying our best, folks. We're trying not to give you like 10 pages anymore, you know, and I know SAG's made some rules recently, but if you're yeah. doing an indie, they don't always follow by SAG rules. So but, um, I'll, we'll do one more because y'all been so nice with your time. I know we're slightly over time here, but uh, Miss Kelsey, and then we'll, that'll be our last question for the night. Hi, my name is Kelsey Russell, and I'm really happy that I was able to join the Zoom. I had a lot of fun. You're beautiful, Kelsey. I'm glad you came to the seminar. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kelsey. It's a brighter and, day just seeing you. Uh, no, no relation to Paula. Uh, well, because uh, <laughs> that was such a quick question. Uh, Miss Kelsey, did you have a question or you just want to say hi? I just wanted to say hi. I'm glad hi. you did. Thank you, Carlin. It's great to see you. <laughs> And we can go ahead and do Todd's really quickly. We can do you, Todd. Thank you. Hey, Kelsey, I appreciate you just doing that and giving me this chance. And uh, Marco, thank you. Uh, I met you on the set of The Sun, and you were so kind and nice. Uh, and I, I appreciated you then. And uh, so it's just really cool to just to realize, make the connection who you were. So here's my question. 
on on real on get acquiring real and then get maybe getting through the process because sometimes we don't have all the portfolio we need yet for the real to submit the things and I run into things with student films and low budget films it's like you can't even get around the casting process without being able to submit a reel so um what's your what's your advice for that is there any way around that you know well the casting director the, then nobody wants to see your reel made up of uh little things you shot in your home studio they don't want to see much of student film but, but if it's an independent film that somebody's spent a little money on and it's relatively good quality if it shows you off in an interesting way do that you can make a reel out of that it doesn't have to be long a reel what you people always want to make it too long but a minute and a half is fine or even a minute if it's all all you have is one thing tape a monologue against a nice backdrop or sitting in a well-lit place and just do a monologue if you have to have a reel and then hopefully when change it when you start getting a few parts you you gotta you have to take these independent films just to get stuff to write on your resume because the agents don't want you with no credits casting directors are scared to see you they don't want to waste the time right you okay. have to kind of take it matters into your own hands but don't give them shoddy amateurish looking film they just pitch it right right that's great i appreciate it i just paula, want to know, i can paula, actually think about that miss paula yeah. um yeah I, I agree if it's terrible sound if it isn't good quality if you have something that was done by a grad student and it's gorgeous and it's all you have but it has to be gorgeous and um i had a student who had some wonderful things on her reel that were just great that ended with an amazing uh, stunt thing that should, that was shot beautifully. And her agent would only let her put on the reel, her two TV network, you know, that's all they wanted on the reel. And I told her, well, okay, you have a reel for that agent. Have a reel of your own for when you self-submit because the reel was great. And definitely short. I couldn't agree with Marco more. Short, 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 make them... <laughs> Yeah, thank you for saying that too, Paula, because yeah, your agent is the one who's selling you and, you know, they only make money when you book something. So they might be very specific with your resume, your reel, but if you're self-submitting for a UT thesis film and you want to show them more versus less, right. do it, do it. And um, I will just throw in one more little piggyback because we're in a self-tape era from a casting standpoint. If I see four good self-tapes that you've done back to back, that might entice me more to click your little profile versus having just a headshot and a flat two-dimensional resume to look at. I'm like, well, at least he'll give me, he or she will give me a good quality first round tape. But I mean, but again, if that's all you have, like Marco was saying too, as you start to get the credits, just throw them in there. And collaborate with your agent, collaborate with your team and be like, this is what I got. What do you think? This is what I got. And keep submitting for those people who do those $30,000 thesis films because they'll at least have a good lens, they'll at least have a good editor. But I get what you're trying to say. It's hard to even get in for those if they can't see your footage. So give them something to look at in the meantime. So I think that's a great place to end things. Uh, Gary, do you want to go ahead and do an outro for us? Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Michael, for being a great interviewer and a great host. Denise, I want to welcome both of y'all on as our new core members. And when we get everything organized in the website, and Marco and Paula, y'all are just such class acts. <laughs> so much soul, so much humor. You're artists, you're great, you're inspiring. And so we can't thank you enough. And more than anything, thanks you folks for attending. You know, we did this live for years, but I'll tell you what, when we get 40, 50 people and more on Zoom, it saves driving and traffic and headaches and everything else. So stay with us. And uh Thanks again for attending. If y'all didn't attend, we wouldn't be here. And thank you, Denise, Michael, Marco, Paula. Thank Love you, everybody. Bye-bye. Nice to see you all. Denise, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm.